back and forth at each other, I'm sure. He goes bad on the Um, Cody bowled that. Didn't exactly fare well. Looked like he bowled pretty good for the majority of the day. I saw 160 there. Games. What was that? Game seven. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Let let, let everybody know what what was going on there. What kind of bowling balls were you using? What were you seeing? So uh, we bowled the PTQ on Viper. The actual event this week is on Wolf. Uh, it's 34 feet. We bowled on 37 feet. Uh, there was a ton of urethane that went down the lane early in the 37 foot. They weren't very hard, and to be fair, the majority of the guys bowling the PTQs this year are the guys that are your better regional guys that aren't on the national tour already. So they're pretty tough fields, um, and we knew coming out of the U.S. Open the scores are going to be pretty high. Uh, kind of happens every year. You, you know, they're dead brutal at the U.S. Open. That week after, everyone's like, hey, look, I got a little bit of room, and they start striking a bunch. So, <laughs> yeah, last year it took like a 240 average the week after the U.S. Open to make the cut. Yep. So, um we knew it was going to be high. Uh, I started pretty well. I went 230, hit a weird pair. Game two, shot 2-0. Uh, was throwing a pitch black, shot 230, game three. Uh, game four is kind of when everyone in the field started getting out of the urethane, at least a lot of the non-Purple Hammer guys. Uh, the, the Purple Why Hammer guys stayed is? in it a little bit longer. Uh, <laughs> and obviously the lefties definitely stayed in it. Um, but, yeah, we, we kind of made the decision. I got into a pinup reality that was shiny uh it had like a little bit of compound on it uh just some steep angles i went 250 uh then i shot at 710 in the 10th for 220 game five and then game six i hit a pair that was really weird and basically i moved six right on the right lane and four right on the left lane and threw a 10 bagger to shoot 250 well when we went to game seven after being 200 over, I was in the cut, and, well, unfortunately, I made the move back left with the same reality, but at this point, they were a little slower, so I got nine six times and seven tens and missed a spare and shot 160. I actually didn't miss the pocket that game, and I shot 160. So, yeah, um, a lot of that comes down to just my mindset. You know, I looked up and kind of knew I was in the cut number, and I knew I had a ball in my hand that I couldn't miss the pocket. And I kind of decided that I was like, hey, I'm going to keep throwing this because I can shoot 2 teen 2 And I was trying to force it, basically. Instead of just making the ball change, I knew I needed to because I was trying to be safe and conservative. You know, with the PTQs, you just got to be in the top 12. It doesn't matter if you're first or 12th, you're in the field. So I kind of had that mindset of like, all right, just play some defense, play safe. And unfortunately, it kind of bit me in the butt and... You know, I made the ball change the seventh game and shot 210, I think, or 220. Um, but it was not enough. And, you know, the big takeaway this week is going to be, you know, when I'm bowling local events or bowling regionals or bowling back home, there's a lot of, you know, hey, I'm going to lead or I'm going to win. I'm going to make the ball change. It's going to shoot 240. And you're going to be aggressive. And I did not do that. I did not do that day three at the U.S. Open either. Like JR said, I kind of laid an egg. Um you know, I was 14th going into the third day of the U.S. Open and went 80 under. I got a check. I finished 30th, but I kind of went into the mindset there of, you know, hey, I'll just go even for the day and I'll make the cut. And it's like, no, you can't do that. The guys out here are too good. They don't do that. They don't think about, all right, let's just make the top 24. No, they're thinking I want to win the tournament. And that's just a mindset change that I've got to change for myself out here because if you don't make the decisions to try to win and feel like you can win, you're not going to win. So, you know, I'm, I'm giggling a little bit because I I've preached about this over the last few years. Yeah. A lot of the people that they don't quite understand the difference in the mindset out there. And uh, it's hard to balance whether you need to be looking for 250 ball reaction, or you just need to sit out there and just grind and just let it come to you. The, the, the one thing I do know for sure is when you're out there and something's working for you, when whatever mindset is working for you, staying aggressive is working for you. If you switch that mindset into be safe like you did going yeah. into that seventh game, that's never the right move. So nope. obviously from now on, you're never going to go into the, OK, let's just be safe mindset. It's going to be no. why the hell would I change what I'm doing? Why not be aggressive? It's just like with some of those golfers, you see a golfer that 
he, he just needs par or better to win the tournament because he's up two strokes or whatever it may be. And he decides to, you know, go out there and, and he get he has six on a par four and he ends up losing. And they're asking him questions like, why, why'd you, why'd you switch to this club? Why'd you use this club here? And, he, and his answer is, well, this is the way I played all day. If I switch it up, it, if I work, if it works out it great, if it doesn't, you know, I'm killing myself because now I'm changing my mindset. So, yeah. and then you have the other guys that are like, all right, I'm just going to lay up and just play it safe. And they end up losing it because they're playing safe. So yeah. it can go both ways. You can be too aggressive, but I think it's a point where you just have to just make the same moves, the same adjustments, do what you've been doing all day and just trust that you know what the hell you're doing. We're going to go back and forth at each other, I'm sure.